Skino male, kina le 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 kololo. Kale male, kine zina. Kale male, kine zia. Kale male zia kama. Kino na ne 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 zino kale ka. Kale lolo zina kebe kalada. Pale koto sima kele kolono sina. Kalo male male kale dada, sano male kele sata, kolo moshi zaza, ma ha ha Satosh, shall we pray, Father help us to understand your word in the name of Jesus. I just sang in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says we sing in the spirit. The Bible says we pray in the spirit. So you can sing in the spirit and you can also pray. In the spirit. Now, we continue today our exposition of the book of Romans. By the grace of God, we have learned quite a lot. Anyone who has followed the whole series. Now, one thing about Bible teachings and Bible study that sometimes it can be boring because it isn't so controversial. It's like I don't put up a controversial topic. Okay, but if you are a king, you will search for it. You know, the world wants things which are sensational. But you see, God makes things so easy for everyone to understand. There is no need to be sensational in the things of the spirit. It is not about sensationalism. It is not about embellishment. It is about the truth. Is about the truth. So if you desire the truth, if you want the truth, you, you, you love Bible teaching because that is where you can understand the scripture. Romans chapter 12. Okay. And today we are at part 14 of the exposition of the book of Romans. Part 14. God bless you. Now I start from verse 1. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1. I beseech you, Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So here, the Bible says, as a Christian, as a child of God, you cannot give your body to the world. You cannot defile your body. You know, you cannot treat your body the way the others treat it. Treasure your body and, you know, Sustain your body with the word of God. Feed yourself, okay, with the word and abstain from evil. So what it means is that you have to present your body as holy. Don't contaminate yourself with the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, fornication and all kinds of things. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So here, the Bible says that you have to be transformed. How do you get transformed as a child of God? By the renewing of your mind. The mind is an aspect of the soul. The soul is divided into the mind the will and the emotions. So whenever the Bible talks about the mind, it's talking about the soul. Now, the spirit is different from the soul. Therefore, the mind is not part of the spirit. Okay? But the, the spirit expresses itself through the soul. So when the Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, it means you have a lot of work to do. You need to spend time on the word of God. Understand the word. Meditate on the word. As you meditate on the word, then you are being transformed. Your soul is being transformed because your spirit is where God is. But unless you grow in your soul, unless your mind, your emotions, and your will becomes matured, you can do so little. Okay? So the soul is very crucial to your performance on this earth. As you study the word, you are renewing the soul to allow the spirit to flow. Okay, if you don't renew your mind, the flesh, this physical body, will dominate, you know, the soul and it will limit the spirit because the spirit, okay, and the flesh are opposite and they are enemies. Each of them requires the soul to express itself. 
the more you feed on the word, the more the soul, you know, responds to the spirit. The more you feed on the word of God, the more the soul becomes in tune with the spirit. The more you feed on carnal things, on evil, the more the soul responds to the flesh. Okay? So if your decisions, if you find it difficult to obey the Bible, if you find it difficult to pray, it means that your flesh, your physical body, you are feeding your physical body. Your soul is responding to your physical body more than it is responding to the spirit. So you have to shift focus, limit your exposure to the world, and then feed, let your spirit feed your soul. And when that happens, you will realize that you'll be able to live in a godly way, you'll be able to operate in holiness and righteousness in this present world. It is up to you. Okay. Verse 3. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Every man, every woman, if you're a child of God, if you're born again, if you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have faith. But you need to be humble and don't be cantankerous. Don't be uh, arrogant. You need to be humble and operate within the knowledge you have and operate within the word of God. There is a measure of faith you have. The level the faith will reach is up to you. For us, we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another. Having then gifts, differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exalteth, on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Now, it talks about the fact that as Christians, when we come together, we have to know, we have to respect each other. We have to love each other. We are all one. We have different types of gifts. Some can prophesy. Some can give more than others. You know, there are different types of gifts. But we have to know we are one. And just as the physical body, the eye needs the nose. The mouth needs the teeth. The hand needs the head. The head needs the leg. So if the eye says that I'm the eye, without me, you cannot move. Okay, the nose will say, I, without me, you cannot breathe, you will die. So, every part of the body, we all need each other. It is children, spiritual babes, spiritual babes who are always judging. Anyone who keeps judging others is a spiritual babe. The more you know, the less critical you become. Because the more you know, the more you grow in love. The less you know, the more critical you are. Because the less you know, the less love you have. Arrogance and a critical spirit, their cousin is ignorance. Arrogance and a critical spirit, their cousin is ignorance and lack of knowledge. Verse 10. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. It talks about the fact that we are supposed to operate in love, but these things are not in a vacuum. You have to be prayerful. You have to be determined because there will be challenges. As a human body, we are, we are family in one church, but we have differences. We are trained in different backgrounds, you know, different families, different culture. And so there are bound to be differences, but we need to pray. As you pray, 
you experience the presence of God. You experience the presence of God and you are able to tolerate each other. The more we are determined, we should be determined to live in peace. We have to work it out. We should be able to forgive each other. But it comes when we are having an intimate relationship with God. The more you become intimate with God, the more you receive from God, the character of God, so that you can be able to manifest one, you know, you can be able to manifest one, love, two, faith. You can manifest, you know, the, 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 the nature of God. As you spend more time with God, you magnetize God and you can manifest God, which is love, faith, forgiveness, and all that. Distributing to the necessity of the saints, giving to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. So we must be able to forgive each other. We must be able to bless people and we should be able to give to people. We should give to the widows, we should give to the needy and all kinds of things. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. We must respect each other. And as I said, as a collection of people from different backgrounds, different families, different countries, and all that, in a church, in any country you are, we have differences. We must be able to understand our differences, appreciate our differences, respect our differences, and help each other to succeed. In any form the Lord has enabled us to be able to, you know, uh, offer help, we must be able to offer up, offer help freely and cheerfully. For the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Recompense to no, no one, no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. What it means is that within you, try as much as possible to be in peace, to live at peace with everyone. And don't, it says, ensure that the fault is not from you. You should not be a cause of war. You should not be a cause of a quarrel. You should not be a cause of a disagreement. So he said that make sure you are not the cause of any disagreement. And if something happens, as do your possible best to bring peace. Do everything within your, your will and your power to bring peace. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I repay, said the Lord. Sometimes anger will come, but don't let the sun go down on your anger. Be angry and sin not. You see, everybody has anger. God has anger. He created us in his image and likeness. Therefore, every human being can be angry. But be angry at evil and don't, you know, don't allow your anger to cause you to sin. Okay? Okay? Don't allow your anger to cause you to sin. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good it is possible evil can overcome you that is why if it wasn't possible he wouldn't have said it you need to be prayerful you have to be strong and then uphold these virtues and god will bless you uphold these virtues and the lord will bless you child of god the christian life is not a religious um, thing many people see it as religion it is it is an intimate relationship with God. The more you spend time with God, the more you can live the God life. And you realize that it becomes more difficult for you to live in sin. If you feed on the word every day, if you pray every day, you pray in the spirit, you meditate on the word of God, righteousness becomes your lifestyle. It becomes your lifestyle and it, it is very possible for you to live in holiness and righteousness in this present world. I believe it and by the grace of God, I am living it. I testify to the power of the word of God for several years by the grace of God. God bless you. May God strengthen you and keep you in the bond of peace. I love you and I thank you for your time. Like the message, share it to other friends, subscribe if you have not. Thank you so much and God bless you. 
Kilimalos, Kinameria, and the Hela Kira.